Hey guys, Steve here. Today we're checking out a game in the Kitakaze. That's right, the new Tier 8 Japanese gunboat destroyer. Yuka K is the build there. And there's the ship build. Now we haven't put any AA modules on it yet. That's not an invitation for the carrier players to tick me off to the point where we will do it, but uh, sooner or later it's bound to happen. It does have good AA to begin with, though. Uh, as we'll see here, we do shoot down at least one crop of planes in this game with the carrier. Um, but here we are, we're on the seaside, uh, only one ship accompanying us, Battleship. We're going to hope he comes close to us uh, for close quarter support. We're going to see what we can do on the cap. Now, what's going on with this thing? Similar to the Akizuki, uh, or Akats, yeah, Akizuki, Tier 7 Japanese gunboat, first iteration of the gunboats on that uh, branching, you know, not branching off, but finishing up the secondary Japanese destroyer line. Uh, you know, the first six or up to tier six they're all traditional torpedo boats and then all of a sudden tier seven we got uh the first gunboat now here we got the second one kitakaze so same 100 millimeter guns the challenge with both of these ships is understanding in very quick uh real time what the shells are doing and how to react with them all right so you're going to need to be switching the between the ap the he and you're going to be needing to keep an eye on the not only the hit indicators what are they doing are they penetrating or not what sort of damage are we getting as well, okay? Uh, if all of a sudden you're going from 2,000 per salvo with the AP to four or 500, well, we better switch over the HE pretty quickly, test a couple salvos there, see what we're doing, and uh, compare the values. you got to switch back and forth very quickly. Why are we dropping a zoning torp with a 2 minute 30 second reload? Doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? Especially with one launcher. Well, the plane was coming over here, and I'm thinking, okay, if the plane decides to hover over me for a while here, I can't use the torps anyways because if the plane's overhead, he'll spot the torps. Everyone on the red team will see them coming uh, for the entirety of their uh, duration of active life. So I figured if we're going to get a zoning torp down, we might as well just throw it down. But I think on this map, usually they come from the left side of the island, and I was just kind of reading Twist and Track. Nevertheless, we do shoot down four of the planes, dodge behind the island. We didn't want to get caught out in the open here and get slapped by two, three unknown ships. Uh, but now that that first squadron is dead, uh, we're going to go and investigate this Hayate. Now, they do have a battleship coming over here. Looks like he spawned in the middle. And this is the guy I'm worried about, first and foremost. We don't yet know what happened to the guys that spawned south of sea. Uh, we'll find out here in just a moment. But at this point in time, I'm like, okay, well, let's try and kill the Hayate. Let's try and get the base. Let's see if we can make either of these plays uh, happen. Because those are going to be our two main goals that we see in front of us currently. Twist and Track suggesting he's over here. He's not on the base yet. They're getting on B, which uh, Blue did manage to get early. Um, but we're just going to kind of sit on this base here, see if we can capture it. We can just sit here for a minute. That's no skin off our nose. Flander coming in here, and that's something we need to keep an eye on. He's definitely coming towards us. Uh, we do have one more battleship coming over here, but I don't know if either of the guys can really have a good shot at this uh, guy to south at the moment. Hayate. I think the planes are going to be spotting him uh, for the duration of this fight. And you can see we switched over to AP, and you can see a mixture of mostly pens, a couple skips, uh, maybe an overpen here or there, but the AP, 100 caliber, uh, even these broadside destroyers. Again, you need to keep an eye on them. Like, very, very lightly destroyers, perhaps we'll be getting a bunch of overpens, but uh, perhaps not. It's always worth uh, experimenting. Shooting into the hull, in this case, uh, we're having quite a bit of success, and we take them down relatively quickly. All right, backing up, backing up. He's got some torps coming here. We're just going to chill. we got a claw between us and the Flander. Make sure those torps go by before we try and do anything funny. Uh, but we'll start taking some shots here. If we get spotted by planes or whatever, uh, we do have that smoke sitting in front of us for another minute, uh, which we'll try and use. Trying to get the Flander on fire here, though. See if we can get him uh, burning before those torps hit him. Maybe cause some problems. And he can, if you keep an eye on the shells, the white, the orange coming out of these things, you're going to see they're constantly switching. All right, he's angled here, so we're going to go over to the HE and see what we can do uh, but if he's you know even now if we can reliably hit that superstructure it might be worth taking a salve or two just to test the ap i don't think at that angle it's going to be too profitable but again we're trying oh iowa oh this isn't looking good tempted to throw the torps down here we do have the smoke going for 15 more seconds and we do have the ability to block this guy and we can see by the indicator he seems to be slowing down uh typical battleship movement move forward a bit and then kind of back up right it's not uh uncommon to see in fact that's usually how i'll be moving to my battleships quite often as well and other ships other ship classes as well for that matter 
Uh, but here we go. We got, you see on the map there, it's about a 45 degree angle. Uh, but we got nice, reliable shots on the superstructure. We're getting 2,000, 2,500 every three seconds. That's a lot of damage. It doesn't seem like a lot uh, per hit. Uh, but if you keep an eye on our total damage and his health bar uh, in conjunction with each other, you'll see eh, we're starting to cause some problems for the guy. And the team's getting some good shots, too. That's good. Keeping an eye on the Kansas. We got the reload booster ready to go here. Thinking double strike. If these guys both say to themselves, ah, screw it, let's just go rush this DD and whatever else is over there. Maybe we get a couple torps off and maybe we get some uh, cool <laughs> double strike beat drops or whatever. Uh, but anyway, he's backing up, keeping an eye on him. And as he angles more, you can see on the map now, he, looking on the screen there, he looks about 45 degrees to me, but it's always helpful to look on the map just to see how steeply angled he is. He is over 45 degrees, so at this point in time, those old white AP shells are still getting some damage, but we're getting a lot of ricochets and the reliability not there. So finally we switch over to the HE. Something's wrong with his build. It doesn't seem like he's uh, got infinite health over there, despite being right next to his buddy there. Maybe he doesn't understand how to play the game as a battleship. All you got to do is put on will to rebuild, park next to your teammates, and you're a god. Fix your build, problem solved. All right, Kansas moving forward here. And he's not going forward aggressively enough to launch the torps. And by the way, we got the <laughs> battleship on our team uh, potentially blocking the whole thing. So we're just going to move forward a little bit. Drop spot again here. This is dangerous. Certainly dangerous, especially if that plane comes over here and spots us. We don't know what that other battleship to the south is doing either. Uh, potentially if we get spotted and uh, heat him up, he pops up over there. He's going for the will to rebuild infinite health trick as well. Uh, but he's coming around hot. He's had enough of this stuff. Uh, he's been <laughs> fooling around for the whole match, and uh, he's gunning it. So Kansas playing conservative. Flander, uh, we'll check the uh, aim indicator again. Maybe, maybe not. It doesn't look to me like he's slowing down. He does get a shot off, though, and it's a meaty one. And that might come back to haunt us later. Vicious shot from the teammate, and the Flander's in trouble. He's on the ropes. And one torpedo strike there. Boom, down he goes. All right, so now is an important time to make a decision, right? and uh, evaluate this in the comments, perhaps, if you're interested. Uh, I got two options. I can stick around here. I can even bum rush this guy, torp him. Uh, I'm hoping, frankly, if I'm the ritual, I would just straight up ram him, right? Because what we need to do is free up the side uh, and relieve pressure on this base, okay? So I was kind of hoping, okay, we got two battleships versus one over there. Technically, I don't know what our dude to the north is focused on at this point, but uh, if I'm the ritual, I just straight up ram him. Uh, or the Kitakaze, I could rush him. I could, uh, maybe, maybe die doing so. Suicide rushing him. I could play conservative, continue to use the island to shoot. That's another three, four minute proposition. The problem is they've captured B and now we got to assume they're pushing into A, which we got a carrier who I'm not entirely sure. It looks like he's playing. I don't, <laughs> I think when that squad gets shot down, I finally start trying to figure out what the carrier's doing and I didn't see any, uh, movement or planes on the screen. Uh, so I wasn't sure 100% if he was playing. I think right there I was like, okay, what's the carrier actually doing? I, I guess I didn't notice the the carrier on the southwest getting spotted. But anyway, uh, they are attacking A, and of course I'm concerned about controlling the majority of the bases, or at least half of them, because we do have the score advantage right now. Um, but, you know, it's just... In retrospect, I'll just give you a little or a little hint as to how this one's going to go. We will lose, and we will lose on score... And we will have more than one opportunity to win this game. So this is kind of the first inflection point. And again, watching this back and playing it, I'm like, do I deal with that guy or not? And you might be saying to yourself, oh, sure, you can get the carrier too. That's not a scoring play at this point in time. It'd be nice to get the carrier off the board, but the bases are what we're trying to do here. So Pablo coming in hot. We're getting some shots on him. He's trying to nuke uh, something. Of course, he's probably going to do it. A Pablo with a lot of health near you, especially as a battleship is a losing proposition, um, but we're hoping to get him off. He does kill the New Jersey, it looks like. And now we are down, and he is on A, but I'm thinking, okay, well, if everything else remains equal, uh, we'll be up if I can kill the Pablo. Oh, no, supporting fire from the south. We need to pop the smoke. Pablo's in his own smoke cloud, and if we drop our smoke, cut off the dude from the south, now we drop spot. That's I would like to have that smoke available, certainly, especially with the carrier late potentially spotting for me. Would have been a nice offensive tool, but we needed the defense because the battleship, I don't know what he was doing, guarding B for most of the game. He moves into the middle of the map, very strong position, and 
does a great job supporting. So all of a sudden, this palm urn uh, kind of forces our play. And a lot of times, you need to realize in this game, there's plays you want to make and there's plays you are forced to make. Your opponent's good or bad, and there are a lot of good players in this game, certainly, but sometimes what they do, you are forced to react to do, right? If I'm sitting on the cap in a battleship, and I'm in the destroyer, battleship pushes into the cap, I need to get off the cap. Or a cruiser, you know. I'm not going to likely win that fight. I'm certainly not going to capture the base when the dude's on the base with me. Uh, I need to get away. All right, so that's... We need to react uh, in a good manner. Speaking of reacting to the team, the battleship in the south west, this is a problem. Now, he's getting off of the base, and you can see the dude around C that he was... I was hoping he'd ram earlier. He's already on the base. All right, he's, our guy's going for the carrier... Uh, or maybe he was going to play Ring Around the Rosie trying to get the other dude. Uh, but that's a disaster. And that's actually going to be uh, an obstacle that we're going to be unable to overcome, right? This These games late, especially when they're this close, you need to be thinking first and foremost about the bases. Carriers are always nice to get. Carriers are always nice to get because they can cause problems. They can even uh, win games if played properly or help win games. But what you can't do is uh, win a game where you have zero caps or one cap versus uh, four or three caps, right? You cannot, it's hard to win a game when you're even, right? It's easier to do. Um, but when you're down, especially this late, and especially when uh, we got a Palmer who's got a shit ton of health and a carrier who's doing God knows what, <laughs> carrier's trying to capture. The, I think the carrier is playing the base is what I, I can't fault him for. Um, but he needs to recognize that he's putting himself in a lot of risk here. Um, he'll, he'll, he will survive, I'll give him that. So, I, I mean, I, I'd like to see what he was thinking and what it looked like from his perspective. But in my mind, moving that carry where he did was a little bit risky. Nevertheless, that's the play that's going on. I'm trying to get this guy down. That's going to be hard. You know, we're up to 120,000 damage with only one torpedo hit. So certainly this thing can do some damage with the guns. We know that. Um, but... Health is at a premium. Playmaking currency, our own HP, uh, limited. In fact, we're nearly broke. All right, so i got to be very careful or I can't shoot a full salvo or his secondaries will kill me. I'm just trying to shoot these two back guns uh, without getting spotted. Again, you'll see the shells constantly switching here if he's broadside like that. We can hit the superstructure. Should be getting decent damage values. Um, but, uh, you know, this is... Very, you know, every time I get spotted there, it's like, uh oh, did I just die? Maybe, maybe not. Let's see what the secondary gunners managed to hit. All right, he's low. He's on the ropes. Uh, can the graph get him? Uh, but already we're looking at, all right, he did kill the carrier southwest. That's a bit of an issue. Can he get on C? Can I get on B? I don't think, at this point in time, I'm not even considering getting on B, which, again, this, in retrospect, may have been another play that I flubbed. Uh, I didn't think that we'd have enough time. In my mind, I'm like, okay, I think that guy's probably going around C again. If our uh, Richie gets on C or whatever that thing is, I'm there to support. Maybe We're probably going to have to gun him down is what my thinking is. Uh, the, our carrier commits to going to B. I can get there faster than he can. Uh, but I'll tell you, we, do, we, we lose by about 60 points, I want to say. We can see when it ends. So I don't think me even going to B... Is necessarily the right play. I don't. It's so. This is so close. It's very hard to evaluate. We'd probably have to pause it, do some math. Ain't got time for that. All right. <laughs> if you guys got your calculators and got a couple minutes, you can add it up. Let's say I can get to B in a minute. We got, you know, 50 seconds. Uh, do the math. Figure it out. Because our guy is about to get to C. What he needs to do right here. My criticism of his play. Get on C and then drop. Anchor, right there, right there, right there. Do not get spotted, right? Because we're only down 22 with a minute and a half to go. So it takes a minute. We got 30 seconds left of scoring off of that cap. Uh, assuming the guy doesn't come around and sink our dude or, uh, you know, cause some other mayhem. We actually do win in that instance as well. But what he does is he's like, okay, I'm, I'm on the base. Cool, I've frozen the scoring or who knows what's going through his mind. I got to sink the guy. Uh, no, do not... Jeez, do not sink him. He spotted Richie. will get reset a couple times, and that's the end of it. So this is the beauty of the game. I'm not really criticizing anyone necessarily. I, I can identify plays that my teammates ro made wrong, maybe plays that the red team made wrong, and I certainly have identified at least two where 
maybe if I made a different decision, there's a different outcome. All right, that's why this game can be interesting if you got players that are actually moving around the board and trying to score points uh, by capturing the bases, then the game's actually uh, quite interesting. Uh, but in this instance, uh, we just kind of dug a hole by conceding too many bases. And uh, I don't even know if we conceded them. I think Red just straight up uh, maybe beat us this game. Anyway, you guys let us know in the comments. I'm interested to hear what you guys have to think because I know a lot of you guys are uh, good World of Warships legends minds as well. I'd like to get some feedback. This one, watching it back, I'm like, oh, man. It's so close, but it was a good demonstration of the Kitakaze, I thought, which I do think is fun. I don't know if it's super, super strong. I got to play it a lot, not a lot more, but I got to play a little bit more to come to a further conclusion on that. But anyway, that's the first look at the Kitakaze on this channel. Hope you guys did enjoy it. If you did, please hit the thumbs up. New to the channel, consider subscribing. Lots of World of Warships coming all the time. Questions, comments, leave below. Love to hear from you, and see you later. All right, peace.